the 19th of January 2024 Tesla's failed to charge just uh, reading an article there and there are plenty of these online many people who have this bug this green bug just can't take any criticism of electric cars at all uh, Tesla driver stranded after extreme cold makes, sim makes simple feature impossible they're, they're stranded anyway now at the moment on the 19th of January there's freezing conditions right all across the northern hemisphere well I can say for certain in Ireland in the UK in parts of Europe in Scandinavia and I'm sure in Russia I don't have the figure for Russia but North America is froze up Canada is freezed up and most of the northern part of the United States such as Chicago uh, New Jersey and those states are all fr frozen up way below minus zero degrees centigrade now uh, what it says here as temperatures plunged as low as minus 17 degrees Celsius in parts of America this week it's been no joke for residents Tesla owners that's the Tesla electric car have faced particular trouble after the extreme cold made it impossible to charge their vehicles leaving some stranded out in freezing conditions so what we're seeing here is something I didn't know about and that is that the cold makes it hard to charge the car it doesn't take the charge up as good as when it's warm now warm is defined as about 68 degrees Fahrenheit which is about 17 degrees centigrade right so now the thing about it is to temperatures there's so many temperature scales I think there's four of them the real one is Kelvin and a freezing of water is 27 no sorry 273 degrees Kelvin at zero degrees Kelvin Kelvin's there's no movement in the electron in any atom so if you have a bunch of atoms there hydrogen steel, iron uh, calcium they all stop uh, going around they seize up completely that's the lowest temperature that is possible to achieve below that you cannot get the atom any colder so uh, Kelvin is the proper um, measure of temperature because Kelvin uh, has a, a absolute baseline an absolute coldest temperature whereas centigrade is only the freezing and boiling point of water and Fahrenheit something else but in any event anyway electric vehicle drivers have reported being stuck out in dangerous temperatures because of lack of working power ports the chargers are not working and the time it's taken to charge cars up it's taken a lot longer to charge them our batteries are so cold it's taking longer to charge now so it should take 45 minutes it's taken two hours for the one charger that we have Tesla owner uh, uh, Brandon Welburn told ABC 7 Chicago I have seen at least 10 cars get towed away from here because the cars they, they died uh, they'd run out of battery now that shows you that Teslas can be towed you cannot tow a Nissan Leaf car it's impossible to tow a Nissan Leaf car if you do you'll destroy it whatever way the gearing is in it and the regenerative braking and all this uh, you you um, you cannot tow some of them but now you must be able to tow the Tesla because this fella says they were towed it's too cold it uses too much of the energy to keep the car somewhat reasonable temperature so everybody is getting towed away and we have nowhere to charge so there's the report and all of the people telling me that oh no they're a great idea and they're a great idea um, from outside the highway there's a whole line of cars about 20 cars all Tesla cars and you can look around here every single car is a Tesla full with Tesla cars this whole parking lot said Sejit Ahmed who was waiting for a charger in the Oak Brook area of the city now that's Chicago I'm, oh it is, it is Chicago yeah yeah we're we're, <coughs> we're waiting and waiting for over an hour it's unfortunate that these cars are sitting dead in on, on in the spots 
just there and they're not going. Tesla's web website, website explains that the cars use more energy in cold weather to keep the battery and the inside of the car warm. So the battery has to be kept warm by its own power. The manufacturers also recommend not allowing power to drop below 20% in case the cold weather kills the battery. I think if you let it go down to maybe 5%, it can destroy the battery. I'm not too sure about that. A blue snowflake icon may appear on the touchscreen and in the app if your battery is too cold for full power and ideal range. When this icon is displayed, you may notice reduced regenerative, regenerative, regenerative braking and acceleration, Tesla explains. Leaving your vehicle plugged in whenever possible and keeping the charge level above 20% when not plugged in will reduce the impact of cold temperatures. I'm sure there's many a person driving home wishing to get home and the thing goes down below 20. And what are you going to do? Are you going to stop or are you going to try and make it home? In fact, all lithium ion batteries have trouble in extreme cold, meaning it's not just Tesla, it's not just cars that are affected. Well, sure, you'll be carrying your mobile phone in your pocket and there'll be a bit of heat there, you know. That's it, folks. I'm just pointing out that this is the time to test them. I know that batteries in ordinary diesel and petrol cars, gasoline cars, go. I had a friend had one had to be replaced. It's seven year old the battery, seven year old, and um, was replaced recently. And away away he goes, no big problem. Hundred and thirty euros or something. When the now here's another report from CNN. When temperatures bottoming out, with temperatures bottoming out across the country. <coughs> Electric vehicle drivers are probably noticing their driving range is plummeting. Here's why it keeps happening, and there's more to it than you might think. <coughs> Test by the Consumer Adversary Group Consumer Report showed that EV driving range dropped about 25% in highway cruising on average in sub zero in sub freezing uh, weather compared to days warmer outside temperatures days with ordinary or with warmer temperatures so it's comparing one with the other there are two main reasons for the drop in driving range and how far the car can go before recharging the battery and the driver both human beings i don't know why they put say a battery is a human being uh, both you oh no both human beings and ev batteries work best within a range of uh well 60 to 60 to mid 70s fahrenheit that's that's uh, about 18 to 26 degrees said Andy Gaberson, head of marketing of EV battery research company Recurrent. Batteries operate through a chemical reactions with electrons and ions moving from one side of the battery to the other. And when it gets too cold, all sorts of chemical reactions slow down, including those taking place in the battery. That means driving range is reduced. But human beings also don't function as well in the cold. When we are driving in the cold day, we need to turn on the heat. Well, now that's a bit that's a bit simplistic, isn't it? That's actually a much bigger factor in reducing EV range than the effect of temperature on the battery itself. He said, in gasoline-powered cars, turning on the heater hardly impacts the fuel economy at all. That's because the gas engine makes a lot of heat all the time in summer and winter. In fact, when your car burns gasoline to drive, most of the energy gets burned into waste heat, then motion, routing some extra. Some extra, some of that heat extra into the cabin to keep the occupants warm with no trouble at all. Electric motors and batteries, on the other hand, produce very little heat, waste heat. That's part of the reason why they're so efficient. Now that is a lie. Electric vehicles and batteries don't produce much waste heat. There's a little bit in the motor. But the power station that produces the electricity is no more efficient than a gasoline or petrol engine. Depends on whether it's open cycle gas turbine or, or combined cycle gas turbine, they range from 35 to 65% efficient. Or if it's, a, if it's a diesel engine, they're down to maybe 50% efficient. So when you make the electricity, half of it goes away on heat. When you burn it in the car, only maybe six or 7% of it goes away in heat. And then there's transmission losses of 7% in the grid. So you see the way the little lie is slipped in all the time. You, this, this, if, you, if you take the petrol or the diesel and you 
burn it in your car, you lose about 45% of the, of the energy that's in the petrol or diesel to heat, and that heat can be used to keep you warm in the car. If you, if you burn electricity in the electric car, you get much less waste heat, but there's no heat to warm yourself, there's no heat to keep the battery going, and already half about of the potential energy of the fuel in the power station, the coal, oil or gas, is, is lost through heat. So you see, they're not being honest about it. In consumer reports, EV tests, taking lots of short trips made things substantially worse. Yeah, so if you only go short trips, I don't know why that is. Every time the vehicle stopped and the car and the cabin cooled down, it had to be reheated again. And the vehicle started swapping more energy and doubling the amount of range lost. So fortunately, most newer EV models, now the newer ones are supposed to be better. So where does that leave the one you bought last year? Have very efficient heat pump systems heating systems that help minimize the impact. But even those systems have their limits and don't work well when temperatures drop below 14 degrees Fahrenheit, said uh, Garrison. Now, 14 degrees Fahrenheit, that's about minus six, is it around that? They're considerably more efficient, they're, consi they're considerably more efficient for heating, whether it's in your house or your water heater or your car. So you're just drawing less energy or heat in the cabin. I don't know what he's on about. Still heating the cabin causes substantial losses. EV charging times are longer when the temperatures are cold. Charging, just like discharging and powering the car, is a chemical reaction and blah, blah, blah. Now, the point about all this, folks, is you never heard a word of that on any of the media. You never heard a word. This is the first time they admit this, when they have to. Why don't they put that on the brochure for them? when people are choosing an electric car in the month of June. So, you see, the reality, if you have a reasonably good battery in your diesel car, and I don't know why there's such a buzz about, about petrol cars, I know there has to be a certain amount of gasoline uh, used, but the diesel car is superior, in my view, way, way ahead of any of the, uh, any of the other ones. And so, um, so well, that's, that's up to people themselves, but this wasn't signposted. People are not told this by garage salesmen. And imagine at this moment, at this very moment tonight, there are thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, of electric vehicles in Britain, in Ireland, but particularly in America and Canada, just sitting there. Just sitting there at power stations. And I never knew that they didn't charge. Funny enough, I thought that you could charge them like with electricity wherever. But they do not charge, and a lot of the power, the, the charging points, have no electricity in them at all. That is, I couldn't go on with that. My whole operations would stop if I had to do that. It's unbelievable that people are voting for governments that voice this on them. And that's the reality about it. Folks, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. We'll see you back for something else soon.